In the previous tutorial, we'll, we create simple truss structure, parametric truss structure in Grasshopper. And now we will convert this structure to Karamba model. So now in Grasshopper, let's type line to beam component, Karamba. And I'm going to connect our top post and bottom cores as a line com as a line input in Karamba line to beam component, and I'm going to give the this ID num ID name in Karamba, say code for this beam, and I'm going to copy and paste this component, and I'm going to connect our post lines in here, and I'm going to copy this panel and I'm going to type post as a ID name. Again let's copy and paste and this time we will connect these two lines at the same time and we'll type web as a ID name. So we convert those grasper lines into Karamba Karamba beam element. Okay. And now we'll provide support condition in Karamba. So we'll extract two points from our truss structure and give these points as a support condition. So what I'll do first of all, let's type support and click on that. That's support component. And from the points we have here, as you can see, we have first points we create and second points we moved, we can use these points as a support condition. So what I'll do, I'm going to connect these points to here, and another points we have at the end. And let, let's give lock all six freedom of degree, uh, six degree of freedom for our structure. So when you lock this lock that it becomes black which means that now this support condition is fully fixed uh, support to Karamba. Now we'll provide load condition for Karamba and in this case we'll provide gravity load and so that we give our dead load for the whole structure. Okay now I'm going to provide minus one kilonewton as a vector. So we have gravity load. And I'm also going to give 0 as a load case. And I'm going to copy this information here and let's make this time I'm going to give uniform lines. So uniform line load. I'm going to connect another vector here, this time I'm going to make load case to 0, ah, uh, 1, sorry. And let's connect them as a assemble model. So we type assemble model Karamba component and we'll assemble beams, supports, and load cases. So these are load, and we have support condition, and we have beams. Okay, I'm going to create container for this. So I'll type element container and I'm going to connect all these beam element to one container. And I'm going to flatten our container so I can also connect them to our assemble model component. Support condition, I'll also make support container and I'm going to connect this one data and let's make it flatten and connect to support input of our assemble model. I'm also going to make a load container and I'm going to make it flatten and I'm going sorry, I'm going to flatten it and I'm going to connect it. Actually you can directly connect the load condition or element to the assemble model but I, it's manner, just my, myself, I found it easy to organize my Karamba model by using these containers. So let's connect 
the load cases into one container and let's provide it into our assemble model um, component. Now it's time to define our cross section. In this case, I'm going to use box cross section for the code. So let's type cross section and we have box cross sections in this case and I'm going to borrow my ID for code copy and paste from the top and I will provide this code for the box cross section and I'm going to give around 19cm as a height and we could give let's say 9 around 9cm as a width of our cross section. Uh, this is random cross section, it's not industrial, industrial standard cross sections, but you can make these cross section to match with our industrial cross section. So, what I'll do, I'll search on that cross section range, range component, and I'm going to use UK standard and the shape I'll make it rectangular and I'll specify one of the type from the UK standard and now I'm going to match cross section so this cross section we just randomly created it, and we have to match one of the type from UK standard by using match cross section matcher component so I'll connect this cross section and the cross section range we provide from here and let's see what cross section we can get from this component so we get at the end RHSH 200 by 100 by 4 UK standard cross section so this cross section is applied to code member here you can see so now I'm going to make a cross section container container cross sections container and I'll make it flatten and I'm going to connect my cross section to cross section container and we'll provide to our assemble model again now I'm going to create to the other uh, cross sections for posts and webs so let's this time use cross section cross section selector in this case and I'm going to specify my post so it has to be same capital post as for my member ID name and I'll find out cross sections from read cross section table read cross section table which contains all the cross sections as a tech, uh, as a CSV file and we can see in Karamba we have around more than 6,000 around 6,601 cross sections available in Karamba and you can find name from here for example we can type this name as a cross section then Karamba cross section selector recognize this name as a cross section so what I'll do here I'll type for example UK I want to have CHSH 114.3 by 3.0 cross section and let's hook up my panel to the name then we'll get the specified UK standard cross section as you can see which is good and I'm going to copy and paste this cross section selector to down and I'm going to specify for web members in this case, this ID name has to be matched with our member name, member ID name. Okay. Now I'm going to type. In this case, let's give a little bit smaller. Eighty point eight, eighty point eight point nine as a cross section, and let's make it to three point zero three. Yep, that sh that should be working. In this case, somehow it's showing red, 
they couldn't find the cross section that match with this size. Let's see. S C H S H 88.9 by s let's say 6.3. Then we get that specified cross section from our Karamba list uh, cross section list. Okay. Now I'm going to connect these cross sections to the container. So we have all the members has different cross sections that we need for Karamba calculation. So once we make geometry from Grasshopper, then we can make those geometry to beam component. And after that we can provide support and load condition. And in this case we can we also specify different cross sections for each component, each members. And now we can analyze our model, analyze component in Karamba. We can analyze our model in Karamba. And you can also see the total weight for your whole structure, which is 533 kilogram. And now I'm going to give um, let's say model view component to, s to visualize our Karamba model as a calculated model. And when I connect this model view, there are funny situation coming in this case. As you can see, the uniform load seems like applied to local condition. So let's go back to our load case. And as you can see, we have uniform load that let's make it global. So we have all vertical loads in this case. That's correct. And now I'll type beam view to, this to see our cross sections. So beam view connected. And now I'm going to make my displacement or utilization for our calculation. And also you can connect legend component from Grasshopper to see your legend in, in Grasshopper and also you can draw from this rectangle mouse hit mouse right button and you can set one rectangle in your view and I'm just setting simply in here so as you can see we display our result in our Rhino view mode okay which is quite good alright now we set our Karamba model and depends on our cross-section height as you can see the result will be changed okay and you can also turn on your deformation and you can give higher deformation and as you can see the deformation is not quite strong because these cross-sections are quite strong enough to, s uh, to support those load cases but if you double click on this small node here, you can also give higher range of um, upper and lower limit and then you can make it even bigger deformation to exaggerate your structural result. Okay, And I'll just make it back to 100 as a top and you can see the deformation value. And I can untick to, to disable my deformation view.